Friends, I come to you with rather disturbing news from the front. Washington and Brussels, they are the sworn enemy of good car-faring folk like you and I. Why do I make such a bold statement? Because they can overlook some challenging fuel economy here or there. We have to have our V12 options dwindled down to almost nothing. So today, you and I are going to exercise our religious freedom, our religious right to drive something with a 12-cylinder engine. Let's kick this off by nerding out big time in the BMW world. What you are looking at there is the N74, translated to English, a 60 degree, 48 valve, twin turbocharged V12 engine. A couple of things stand out about this design. Uh, number one, unlike many of the twin turbocharged V8s from Mercedes, Porsche, and BMW we've been driving as of late, the turbochargers do not sit in the V. They reside kind of in their old place off to either side of the engine. Number two, you may remember from my recent demand a naked engine rant. There's too much of that Tupperware going on. And usually in BMWs, when we pull the Tupperware off, still unattractive. This is a wonderful departure. In fact, I've been driving it without the Tupperware because I just want to ogle at this, especially with the 60 degree V. You can see what I assume are aluminum valve covers. They are just stunning. And then there is the business of output. 600 horsepower that comes in at 5,500 RPM, stays flat all the way up to 6,500 RPM, and 627 pound-feet of torque that comes in at 1,550 RPM, stays flat all the way up to 6,500 RPM. That can drive anything you want as long as it's all four wheels through the same eight-speed ZF torque converter automatic we've driven in many BMWs as of late. And then there's the business of fuel economy, which we are not going to discuss today because have I told you this is a V12, which leaves us performance figures. 3.6 seconds to 60 as a basis of comparison, the B7 we drove recently, 3.5. And then VMAX, very oddly, is electronically limited to 155 miles an hour. Before we launch, 5,159 pounds. Depending on how you express your weights and measures, 2,340 kilograms of more important. That is 304 pounds heavier than that Alpina we drove and 437 pounds heavier than a six-cylinder version of this car. With that, oh, this. <laughs> Oh, it is. It is not just fast, it is magnificent. No, it is not explosive power like that B7. No, it's not like any other twin turbocharged or NA V8. There's no other way to put this. This engine is not about going faster even though it has more torque. This engine is about going smoother. Since 2015, you and I have covered in nauseating detail all the bits underneath the bodywork of differing flavors of G12 7 Series, so no need to rehash that here. Rather, let's focus on what's different with this flavor of G12 7 Series. First and foremost, four-wheel steering is fitted as standard. Second, they change the wheels. So in a 740, as a great example, those have 19-inch wheels fitted as standard. These have 20-inch wheels fitted as standard. Then by far the biggest change, they remake map the adjustable dampers, and they do that for two reasons. The first is obviously to take into account the extra weight in the nose, and then second, to add additional functionality to the drive modes. So like a 740 would have an eco, a comfort, and a sport mode. This, like the B7, has eco, comfort, sport, and sport plus. I can't honestly tell you that driving dynamics are appreciably different here. Yes, they are different, I would argue, more because of the laziness of the engine and the tune of the suspension rather than the overall change in the vehicle. And yeah, you probably do notice the pitch a bit more towards the front of the vehicle rather than the back of the vehicle for obvious reasons. What is that old saying, one cannot survive on V12 engines alone or something along those lines? Which is why you and I need to focus on one of the aspects that makes this specific car, serial ending 631, stand out. And that is a combination of BMW serial production options as well as some BMW individual options. 
uh, first and foremost is that color. I believe it's smoky white with a black merino leather two-tone. Stunning when it is new. However, I can already tell some of the scuffs that are just from me. So I can't imagine this thing after five years. But it is stunning to look at, especially with a unique German diamond quilting, if you can call it that. And then the anthracite suede or suede-like headliner, that is specific to an M760, and it is standard on an M760. Then this has been fitted with the executive package in the back, which are the individual bucket seats that come complete with the suede headrest pillow that are heated, cooled, and massaged, the full-length console that has a rear seat HVAC controller, then not one, not two, but three tablets, one on each seat and then one in the console. Now, if I think way back to my time at Monticello Motor Club in the 750 version of this car, the steering tuning here is very similar to the sport setting there. Now we can switch it to sport plus mode, which is specific to this car. And yeah, it changes the responsiveness, but doesn't change the personality of the steering. Yes, it is indeed that time again to play your favorite game, Mind the Options game, with something incredibly rare in today's day and age. Not six, not eight, but 12 cylinders. In this case, it is the 2020 BMW M760i xDrive for a base price of $157,700. For the avoidance of doubt, that is the most expensive G12 7 Series on offer. To that, we add an incredible shade. Normally, I'm not a burgundy guy, but this one they call Aventurum Red Metallic. Uh, if you look at the sticker underneath the hood, it says Zwei, so I don't know if it's Zwei or not. Either way, it is $1,950. And can I just add that the cerium gray on the very large schnoz actually looks pretty good. Not the schnoz itself, that's too big, but the coloring, the way it contrasts with the red, absolutely stunning. To that, we add smoky white with black merino full leather interior for $4,000. Then we add the driver's assistance package. This is all the level two autonomy. No, this is not a self-driving car, but it has the BMW traffic jam assist. That is $1,700. Then we add the first of two options pertaining to the seating in the vehicle. Number one, the luxury rear seating package. This is the heated seat and the heated armrest. That is $1,800. Then there is the executive lounge seating. This is the bucket seats, the console, the massaging, $5,750. Then something that is clearly a faux pas by whoever spec this car, BMW individual options. So this is something very special. Piano black trim. Why would you put this in such a magnificent color combination of car and have to pay an extra $1,080? Wouldn't the wood be standard or perhaps lesser than this piano black? Either way, it would look better. Uh, then the panoramic sky lounge LED roof. That is not the sunroof. It is the LED designs in the roof, $900. Looks magnificent at night. And then the Icon adaptable LED laser beam headlights. No, these are not the always on high beams that are legal in Europe and not legal here. Please, oh, please, oh, please. EPA, make that legal very quickly here. Uh, it is only $1,000 though, so it is significantly cheaper than in the Porsche. And then, you're already spending almost 160 large on your car, you might as well get the better stereo. Not that the Harman Kardon, which is standard, is bad, but you need the better Bowers and Wilkins stereo, and it's kind of a bargain compared to like a Porsche or Mercedes at $3,400. Then we press on to some logistics. The destination and handling von Deutschland, $995. And then the U.S. federal government would like to have a word with you because you went against their fuel economy orthodoxy, so you must be punished to the tune of $1,700 in gas guzzler taxes. That brings us to the full manufacturer's suggested retail price of the 2020 BMW M760i. Did I mention it has 12 cylinders? 
$9,975. And far more important, the brakes. Absolutely have a much harder job to do here. Again, not a huge difference here. I would argue this part is on par with the B7. So unusually good work considering this is what? 4% increase in weight. But more interestingly, the pedal feel remains consistent between this and the B7. After today's exercise, you and I are presented with a rather challenging paradox. And no, it's not whether we can stomach 16 in the city and 20 on the highway. Rather, it's this or a B7. Yes, they both arrive at 600 horsepower. However, they do so along completely different journeys. And yes, both of them have individual charms to them. Like for example, the B7, it's an Alpina, and that means what, soup to nuts, they make 1,800 cars annually, and that's all model lines, not just the B7. This one, to its credit, I would be shocked if BMW sold more than a couple hundred units a year in the US. And then it also has the fact that underneath, it is a last generation Rolls-Royce Ghost, for whatever that's worth. But it does look a lot closer to a box standard 7 series. And for me, it comes down to two things. The first, I believe most of you will appreciate, and that is the aesthetics. And no, I don't just mean the way it looks. It's the combination of the way it looks with the way it drives. And to me, the B7 kind of edges this one out, especially with a stunning 21 inch wheels and that ridiculously beautiful green color on the one that we drove. And then we press on to the second factor, which I don't believe as many of you will appreciate as I do. And that would be, at least for me, the resale would have to make the decision. And my gut tells me the B7 would edge this one out for two reasons. Number one, it's a bit more rare. And number two, it doesn't look like every other 7 Series on the road. So with that, I am gonna turn this around to you. And if I gave you 180 large, would you choose this or would you choose the B7 and put an extra 20 grand in your pocket? Let me know which one you would choose, why, and extra points for those of you that have or currently own an Alpina B7. Let me know in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV on Word, Moto Man TV on Word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And with that, I do want to share something more personal about this experience. It has been a long time since I have driven a 12 cylinder car on camera with you guys. That is a new car. I drive a lot of classic cars that are 12 cylinders, but not a new car. And this, it's more special than you think it really is. It really is better. So I am going to put on Kumo's to-do list to start booking like a Flying Spur or other newer 12-cylinder cars so we can put them in the mix of some of the episodes in the future. And with that, until I see you in the next episode, bis später.